Hello! This is the first video for Chapter 4. And the first thing I want to talk about before we start talking about any of the topics is what we will and won't cover in Chapter 4. There are a couple of things that you don't need to bother learning, so I wanted to let you know what those were. But first of all, the topics we will cover are all of these. I'll just let you read those for yourself. Here's the more important one. The topics we won't cover are combinations and permutations. So if you look in your textbook, those would be formulas 4.1 and 4.2. Please don't worry about learning those. And the second topic that we won't cover is Bayes' theorem, which is all of section 4.5. So basically, we're only covering sections 4.1 through 4.4 in this course. Okay, so let's get started talking about probability. First of all, we just have some terminology that you need to know. First of all, when we talk about an experiment, when we're dealing with probabilities, this is just a process or a procedure that generates well-defined outcomes. In other words, we're taking some type of process, we know what the possible outcomes are going to be. The sample space is going to be the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. An event is going to be a collection of outcomes of an experiment. So this can be any subset of a sample space. And a sample point in this textbook is another word for any single element or outcome in the sample space. So here are some examples of experiments and their outcomes. We've got an experiment that consists of tossing a coin. In that case, the sample space would be the two possible outcomes, which are head or tail. For an experiment that consists of selecting a part for inspection, then again, we have two possible outcomes of our inspection, and that is that the part is either defective or it's not defective. So that's our sample space. Now, if we have an experiment that consists of drawing a playing card from a deck and recording the suit of the card, then our sample space would be the four possible outcomes. It's either hearts, diamonds, clubs, or spades. Now, if we talk about one event in this sample space, let's say that we were interested in drawing a red card. That event would have two possible outcomes. It could be either hearts or diamonds in order to be a red card. Okay, and suppose that you conduct a survey that only asks two questions, the respondent's gender, so either male or female, and his or her age category, which we have as under 18, 18 to 65, or over 65. An experiment in this case would consist of recording one response to the survey, and the sample space would be the set of all possible answers to the two questions in the survey. So our sample space would have six different possible outcomes, and those would be the six combinations of possible answers to the survey. So we could have someone answer it male and under 18, male 18 to 65, male over 65, or female under 18, female 18 to 65, or female over 65. Okay, now suppose we were just interested in the respondents that were in the over 65 age category. This event would consist of two possible outcomes or two possible sample points. And that would be male over 65 or female over 65. Okay, a little bit of notation for probabilities. We're going to use a capital P to denote a probability. And since we're talking about events in terms of sets, we'll usually use capital letters to denote those, A, B, C, and so on. P of A means the probability of event A occurring. A intersection B is the intersection of events A and B. In other words, both A and B occurring at the same time. And A union B means the union of events A and B. In other words, either A or B or both occurring. Okay, when we look at probabilities, there are values that we can get and values that we can't get. 
So the values that are possible for probabilities go all the way from 0, which means the event is impossible, up to 1, which means the event um, is certain to happen. And it can be any value in between. And notice that we can also talk about probabilities as percentages. So we could look at 0 as being 0 percent, we could look at 0.5 as being 50 percent, and we could look at 1 as being 100 percent. So we can have probabilities either in decimal form or as percentages. One thing to notice here is that this stops at 0. We can't go below 0 with our probabilities. In other words, a probability can't be negative. That doesn't make any sense. Also, a probability cannot be greater than 1 or 100 percent. Now when we want to actually compute some probabilities, there are two kinds of things that we look at with probabilities. One of these is called a relative frequency approximation. It's also in some places called an empirical probability. I've also seen it in other places called an experimental probability. And all those different names are because this comes from actually conducting or observing a process. In other words, conducting an experiment. Each result we get counts as one trial of the experiment. And basically we record the results and then if we want the probability of a certain event A, we look at how many times it happened and then how many times total that we ran the experiment. So our probability event of event A is going to be the number of times that A occurred. So we count in how many trials of the experiment our event A occurred and we divide that by the number of times the procedure was repeated, or in other words, the number of trials, the number of times we ran our experiment. So let's look at an example of this. Let's say that we went back to our survey where we were, where we were just interested in the gender and the age category of the respondents. Let's say that we collected 80 survey responses and we got these results that are listed in the table here. Okay, so if we're looking at these survey results as representing a specific group of people, what is the probability that a randomly selected person from this group is over 65? So here we're going to be looking at a relative frequency probability or an empirical probability. So what we want to do is look at in our results how many of these people were over 65. So our event A in this case is going to be the person being over 65, we're going to look at how many ways that can happen. We're going to divide that by the total number of trials in the experiment, which in this case is the total number of respondents. So, and this is something that is a little confusing sometimes. Each one of these survey responses counts as one trial of the experiment in this case. Okay, so to calculate our probability, we're going to look at the two cells of the table that included the over 65. So the number in each of those cells was 9 and 16. So that's our total number of respondents that were in the over 65 age category. And we divide that by the total number of trials in the experiment, which was 80. So we just add on the top, so we would have 25 over 80. And if we calculate that as a decimal, it comes out to be 0.3125. If we want to express the probability as a percentage, then it would be 31.25%. Okay, the other approach to probability is the classical approach. You'll see this sometimes called the theoretical probability. And this assumes that each event in a sample space has an equal chance of occurring. So each sample point has an equal chance of occurring. And to figure these probabilities, we just take the number of ways that A can occur divided by the total number of sample points. Or another way, here's another way to think about it, sort of written out in English. So we just look at the number of sample points for our specific event and divide that by the number of sample points in the sample space. Let's look at an example for this one. If we roll a die and we record the number of points that comes up, if we assume the die is fair so that each of the six faces is equally likely to come up, then what's the probability of rolling a 2? 
and what's the probability of rolling a number less than 5. First we want to look at our sample space. Our possible outcomes for this experiment are just the six different faces on the die. If we write this in set notation, this would be the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if we assume that each one of these is equally likely, then the probability of any one of these outcomes is 1 sixth, since there were six elements in the sample space. If we look at the probability of rolling a 2, that's just one of those outcomes in the sample space. So the probability of rolling a 2 is just going to be 1 6. Now if we look at rolling a number less than 5, that's going to include more than just one element in the sample space. So if we look at that event, we want to know how many ways that that event can occur, or the number of sample points that would be in that particular event. So less than 5 means that we're going to either have a 1, 2, 3, or 4 on the die. So there are four ways that our event can occur. Or in other words, there are four sample points in that event. So our probability, we're going to take the number of sample points, which was 4, divide by the total number of sample points in the sample space, which was 6. So we get 4 sixths. We can reduce that down to 2 thirds.